What's up, Sam fam? Samily family? It is I, the Frenchies Fry, at Sam the Dingus. Here to talk to you today about, uh, about the truth about fighting, but using this, the title of the video as a proxy, so to speak. Uh, so this video is about fight stance, and uh, some, if somehow you needed that to be explained, what that just means is, what is the way that you stand when you're in combat? <clears throat> now, before I show you some different styles, I, I wanna get to the, the meat of the subject, which is that there is no way that you have to do it. Uh, so when people take up fighting, they'll uh, engage in a martial art, take classes, uh, and they'll tell you certain tips and pointers for their style of fighting that you might want to stand or position your hands in. Uh, but what I'm here to tell you is that fighting is completely freestyle, and in some ways I think that's really my goal as a fighter is to re redefine fighting. You know, because when people think boxing or MMA, there's a there's a certain image that they try to uphold, you know? Try to imitate this certain stance. Now, the reason people often stand in similar ways is because it's a very effective way to do it. Uh, but like I'm saying, you don't actually have to do any of this. So let's just say you're a boxer. You don't have to stand with your hands up but what you'll find is very quickly in sparring and combat, you will learn that if your hands are not blocking your face, you'll get punched. That's where people learn to start keeping their hands up. So you can run through these checks with anything. Your stance should be defensively sound, it should be balanced, and you should be ready to attack from any limb and any position that you're in. That's what the essence of a good stance is. But like I said, you don't have to conform to any style that already exists. In fact, I think it's best if you learn how to make your own. Because all in all, fighting is about finding your flow. And if you're uh, trying too hard to like stick to what you see people doing, you might not be unlocking your flow. You're just, you're just imitating and it's not really helping you. Uh, that being said, I wanna run you through some examples and uh, just give you some basic ideas, tips here for a good fighting stance. Now, boxing. Boxing is actually a great example. Um, and boxing would be different than something like MMA or kickboxing because you're only using your hands. So in a sense, you don't have to worry about like half of the equation. But uh, you definitely want to keep your hands up to some degree. L let's just start from the bottom up though. Um, also, you can change your style. Your style should not be set completely. You adjust your style and your stance based on the style and stance of your opponent as well. For example, if you're fighting a wrestler in MMA, you might want a wider stance so that you can sprawl better or uh, better combat the takedown threat. But for something like Muay Thai, where there is not any wrestling involved, a more upright stance is uh, typical and traditional. So let me just get into those real quick. Uh, a Muay Thai stance. Uh, generally is rear leg heavy which means the balance is almost usually uh, in your rear leg so that your front leg can be picked up quickly to check your opponent's kicks which is uh, if you didn't know a defensive response to someone throwing a roundhouse kick uh, it hurts them a lot more when you put your shin in the way instead of the meat of your thighs um, they also keep their hands up like this turned out this is a good guard for a uh, many direct forward strikes but also it can be versatile for blocking kicks and entering the clinch which is pretty signature of Muay Thai basically close range elbows and knees uh, from head control and then you got something like boxing now, now I will say boxing has a lot of variety in it uh, almost all Muay Thai fighters are similar in the way that they stand I guess if you're a traditional Muay Thai fighter but uh, Muay Thai fighters who go into MMA obviously do learn to adapt as well and uh, MMA fights you do have to accommodate for a lot more so you have to be more well-rounded in general now for a boxing stance it would be similar but your weight would be more balanced and you might be set a bit lower instead of up tall like for Muay Thai uh, this is so that you can really sit down and put some torque into your punches but also move fluidly on the move. 
but uh, for hand styles themselves, this is where boxing has really a lot of variety. Uh, there's just a very basic hands in front of your face blocking, uh, trying to get your body protected as well as your head. There's also just a high guard, very effective for blocking all head shots, but of course it leaves your midsection exposed. Um, now there's actually some very specific uh, and unique styles that boxers take on as well. For example, Philly Show. Philly Show is something that feels a little uncomfortable for me unless I'm in Southpaw. For Southpaw, it feels very natural. It's almost what I'm drawn to. So uh, Philly Show is essentially using your shoulder as your main shield because uh, this is blocking your chin. People can still hit you up top here, but your chin is really the danger spot along with your temple. Um, and then your other hand is here to block your face when needed. It's a very, very good defensive stance. It just, uh, I'd say it takes more practice to get fluid with striking from this position. But it certainly can be done. And the best example of a, a Philly Shell user is uh, Floyd Mayweather. So check him out if somehow you don't know him or what the Philly Shell is all about. Also, we've got the peekaboo, which is a Mike Tyson signature. That's just uh, keeping your hands right in front of your face. Now, he mostly used this because his fight style is, uh, is very grimy. He likes to use head movement plus the blocking to get in close enough so that he can land his absolutely famously deadly shots to the body, to the head, anything. Hooks and uppercuts along with his movement. Mike Tyson's got to be one of the greatest boxers of all time. And uh, peekaboo is his stance, very defensively oriented. I don't think anyone could hurt that man. Now you've also got something that's like a, a karate style, which might be a, a bit wider stance. You might use this for uh, MMA or kickboxing. This way you can throw uh, solid kicks, but also mostly bounce back and forth. It can be very light on the feet. And uh, Taekwondo, I believe, is pretty similar. It's uh, Taekwondo, the art itself, is kicks only. So uh, someone who's a Taekwondo practitioner would want to be in a good stance where they can throw any kick from any position. Really, it's all about balance and uh, what you can move best with. Now for mixed martial arts, um, and this is true combat if you ask me, everything else is sort of like a game, and I'm not saying that boxing and kickboxing aren't serious, but uh, it's restrictions on what you can do, and that's just not realistic to a true fight because anything goes in a fight, and most fights do end up in wrestling clinch situations, especially on the street. Uh, so a good MMA stance is a something that is balanced for all of it. <laughs> something that you can protect against kicks if you need, you can defend the wrestling scenarios, but you can also be free with your hands and to strike. Like I said, it's really all about balance. And, uh, and you don't have to stick to one style. You can change styles mid-fight, mid-motion, be unpredictable. That's kind of the essence of what it should be. You should try to surprise your opponent at every opportunity. Some people uh, also like to keep their hands pretty low. In some ways this actually helps you stay balanced and uh, potentially open up more striking options. That being said, you have to be careful not to get reckless. And this style does rely a lot on movement to get out of the way um, because obviously your hands aren't there to block by default. But of course, you can block where needed. Also, if you're thinking just a uh, southpaw versus orthodox, what stance you should use. Typically, uh, whichever hand you write with, they call your strong hand, though I think you're really ambidextrous, but they just teach us the other way in school. Um, <laughs> that being said, I recommend you practice from both stances so that in any situation, you can uh, be well-versed in your movement, no matter how it ends up. Sometimes you find yourself in a bad position, and uh, if you find yourself in southpaw and you've never thrown punches or anything from southpaw, you'll be like, well, now I have to get back to orthodox before I do anything. And that one move could cost you something. So I recommend you practice from both stances. But really, uh, I'm just giving you some ideas and pointers here. As I said, your stance should be unique to you. And uh, in some ways, you create the best stance for yourself. Um, no one can tell you how to do what's best or, or, or truly know what's best for you. You just have to decide for yourself. How do you feel best moving? How do you feel you can get the most power into your shots? How do you think you can stay protected while you attack? <laughs> I know you heard that. I'm, I'm going to leave it in. <laughs> but as I was saying, you really can do anything with your stance. 
You could even have it all the way low to the ground, though I don't really see why you would do this. That's, that's really what it comes down to is you have to choose what actually helps you. You know, you wouldn't do something just because it's different or cool uh, unless you were better that way. Because, uh, you know, having like a low stance like this, it does protect you from like a, a lot of things, but it also makes you vulnerable to a lot of things. For example, uh, being this low in front of me is asking to get kicked in the head. Now being up too tall, like Muay Thai, means you're protected from kicks, but if your opponent comes in for a takedown, you're a bit behind the ball. So for a fight, I recommend you just find your balance, a way that you can have maximum mobility, and uh, I do recommend you keep your hands up. Basically, that's, that's fighting basics. Anybody will tell you that you should have your hands up when you're fighting. And I think as long as you have that, plus you stay balanced, those are really the only guidelines you need. You can make up your own style. You'd be the crane technique, you'd be the karate kid. You could be the, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the anime guy. <laughs> really anything you want, just make it work. And uh, make sure you get some practice in. Uh, you know, hypothetical martial arts are real martial arts. That's like the origin of martial arts, um, the mental game. That being said, you have to make sure it checks out in full time, in real time, or else what you're training is not worth training and your style is not worth developing if it can't hold up in, uh, in real combat. So I recommend you just uh, not worry too much about stance, honestly. Just stand how it feels comfortable and run through the checks. Are you protected? Can you move fluidly? If these things are a yes, then uh, that counts as your fight stance and you can develop it any way you like based on your own specific style and skills. All right, y'all, just a quick little informational for you from the San Dingus crib. I've been training hard, really looking forward to my next fight. Probably within a few months this summer, I'll be back at Street Beefs. So uh, I hope to learn y'all, and I hope to learn myself. And uh, with that, I will see y'all later. I love saluting. Don't know why. <laughs>